Hi there, my name is Elizabeth. Um, for anyone seeing this video randomly and not on my channel, um, I have a fitness and nutrition focused channel called Living Vibrantly. It's a health coaching business. Um, but I have also been sharing about our fertility journey, which has been a long one. And if you want to know more about that, um, I won't go into all the details. I do have other videos if you're curious about our history. I do um, owe an update um, because quite a bit has changed. I think it's been a couple of years since I um, gave an update about what's happening with us, so I'll be doing that soon. But if you look um, under my playlist, there is one called Our Fertility Journey, I believe is what it's called, and you can find all the details all the way back and going forward um, if you subscribe. So um, this isn't going to be about that because um, I have other videos for that, but this is about what not to say and what to say to someone who's going through infertility. And, um, you know, if you just actually, um, I mean, maybe that's how you got here, but if you Google that phrase, there are some really helpful articles out there as well. I don't pretend to be like the only person who's ever <laughs> made a video about this. Um, but I had done this um, in my Instagram stories and was really happy with the response. Like just, I kind of felt like, do I have anything new to say? Um, but it seemed like it was helpful for people to hear about it in the context of our experience. And so I'm just going to share pretty much the same thing that I said over there, except it won't be in 15 second increments. Um, so let's dive in. But that's why I'm looking down. I'm just kind of refreshing my memory um, with what I went through on that video. So a big one that I have gotten that really doesn't feel good and this is the most common one, is um, for you to say, and I'm, I'm struggling with like you, like you watching this, okay? So I don't want to single anyone out, even if you watching this are someone who said one of these things to me personally. Like, it's not about that. I really do hope to suggest some ways that, um, that this could be handled better. Um, for everyone, you know, not just for like the particular people who said this to me, but it doesn't feel good to hear. Um, I get like nervous even just talking about this. It's hard for me to <laughs> express um, disagreement, but it is hard to hear God has other plans for you, right? That it, like maybe things are not working out with having a baby because God has a different plan for your life. So I want to say that, it, like, I think that would be even harder to hear for someone who's an atheist. I'm not. I do believe God has a plan for my life. But the thing is that it's something I've thought about a lot already. And um, I, I do believe that people are intending to be comforting when they say this, that it's coming from a good place where they're wanting to suggest, like, Maybe this is something you haven't considered, that God has something different in mind for you. But for me personally, I have done a lot of um, prayer and internal work and soul searching and conversations with my husband, and we feel that this is the path for us. So um, I guess, you know, making that statement kind of carries an assumption that the person hasn't themselves try to discern God's path for their life um, and that you might know better what that is than they do. So that's, I think, the reason it rubs the wrong way. And then also, there is a lot of guilt that can go along with infertility, this feeling of like, you know, I'm, I'm broken and I'm defective and why isn't this working, like a feeling of failure. And it really just reinforces that, like, maybe I'm not meant to be a parent. Maybe I should take this as a sign that it's just not for me. So, you know, just be aware that that's kind of the subtext of what you're saying when you make a statement like that. Um, so that was number one. And then the second other most common one I get is, have you ever thought about adoption? And now I, I do want to say, like, there are different... Um, contexts for a statement like this and the context matters. So I was talking about this um, with a friend where she said like, I think I actually said that to, to someone close to me. And 
you know, there's a difference. Um, depending on how you phrase it, it really can be taken as unsolicited advice. Like, I think you should consider adoption instead. Or if it's someone that you're very close to and have a, you know, really personal, um, like open, free relationship with, then um, if you phrase it in a way like, you know, I really want to, I just want to understand, you know, did you guys consider adoption? Like, why did you choose this path instead? I'm just curious. Now, some people might still interpret that as prying, but it obviously comes from a place of understanding. And for me personally, I've never minded people asking questions and just wanting to know more. Um, but that's different from like, have you considered adoption is like, First of all, it's like, are you stupid? Like, sorry, but adoption is not like this obscure thing that people don't know about. And if you think I'm being snarky, I'm sorry. But um, it's just this thing where, like, I think people want to say something. So they say, like, the first thing that comes to mind. And this is truly a situation where you don't want to just say the first thing that comes into your brain. Um, think a little bit about how it might be received. Try to put yourself in the other person's shoes. Okay. So yes, I have thought about adoption. Like, did you really think my answer was going to be no? And then the other thing that really matters when it comes to that statement is timing. So if it's just in the beginning stages and someone's really like, um, coming to terms with the fact that maybe this isn't working, trying to get pregnant and really looking at all the options, you know, for us, Maybe that wouldn't have rubbed me so much the wrong way at that time, but to hear it now, like right now, and I've been very open, I haven't said it yet in this video, but in general on social media, like on Instagram, where people are um, asking me that, like I've been very clear about the fact that I'm in the middle of drugs um, for a frozen embryo transfer. So like, this is like a train that is <laughs> en route to the destination, like to stop what like we've created embryos that cost quite a bit of money to do that um and as far as i'm concerned those are our babies so i don't want to just decide to take swerve and take a different course so that that's kind of what you're asking if you're like yeah i think it, it well and somebody even said um like you know, consider that there are so many children out there that need homes. And I get that that comes from like a very well, well-intentioned well place that you're legitimately, you feel very sad for those children and you want them to have like a loving, stable home. And I agree with that. But again, it's not something I haven't considered. And like we've chosen a different path um, and we're invested at this point. So like to stop now. And then the other thing about adoption is it's not as easy as some people might think. So I'm, I'm not an expert, um, but the kind of superficial amount of research that I've done and talking with people I know and just, you know, there are um, Facebook groups that I'm part of where you hear people's stories, but as difficult and time consuming and expensive as fertility treatment is, Adoption can be just as much so um, in terms of, yeah, I mean, I'm not even going to go into it, but just know that if it works out to be inexpensive and fast for someone, that's the exception. And it's also not a sure bet. Like the most kind of worthy couples, families, um, parents out there um, who you're like, they really deserve to be parents. Um there's even if they're willing and open to it, there's no guarantee that they're going to get um, a child. Um, yes, and it's a big system and it's complicated. And there are different ways to do it and you have to dig into all that. So it's not really a quick and easy thing. In fact, it's not a quick and easy thing at all. So I feel like that's like a very when people jump to that conclusion, um, it's almost like they just want to offer a solution, right? And you just have to face the fact that if you're wanting to, to help someone feel better about infertility, you can't solve that for them. I'm sorry. Like, we just have to accept that there are some things in this world we wish we could solve, but we can't. But, like, it's just the same thing when, you know, any big problem 
that your friend or relative is facing and they're sharing with you about like, you got to know that you can't solve it. What you can do is be there for them. Be a listening ear. Be supportive. So um, like validate their experience, their emotions. Ask them more about how they're feeling and what it's like for them. That is what is very, very healing um, versus the unsolicited advice. Um, and I do, that's like a human impulse to want to fix things, right? Like we're not comfortable with these big problems that essentially are not fixable or don't have easy fixes. But try to get a little more comfortable with your own discomfort um, because otherwise um, the types of comments like, have you thought about adoption? It kind of like pushes off your discomfort back onto the other person and that's probably not what your intention was to be supportive, right? All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, <laughs> the other, um, I guess the other category is really just making assumptions. Um, and this maybe applies more to someone like me who's sharing openly about this on social media. And, you know, that's something that is important to me um, because I do feel like there is still a stigma and, and we don't realize how many people go through this. And I want to be part of like ripping that all apart so we know how common it is. And, um, you know, I, I, I really want to use this platform um, to spread awareness. But along with that does come, you know, strangers commenting on your life, which is fine. Like I'm inviting that by having a public account. Um, and I appreciate the people who comment on, on my posts and take time to send me a message. Um, but again, just in general, I, I would much rather someone errs on the side of asking questions rather than making assumptions. So I think people don't ask questions because they don't want to pry. But if you don't ask questions, then you just don't even know about like the assumptions that are underlying the comment you're making. So I'd much rather somebody ask questions. Um, maybe that's just me, but I, I tend to think people would agree with me. So, so some examples, um, lately, uh, you know, the, I, there are things I, like I share, um, I share about how I eat and the supplements I take and the workouts that I do because that's my business. So that's the part of my life that people see. So then they feel comfortable to send me a message like, have you considered that the way you eat? And it, I mean, oh, it's, it's anything, right? It's like, whatever. Like, I mean, go everything from going vegan, drinking one cup of coffee a day, like anything you can think of people will send a message and say, have you considered that that might be the reason behind your infertility? So first of all, yes, <laughs> this, and, and you might not know that, but again, ask questions. So this has been going on for us for seven years now. And over that time, like I've tried working out more, working out less, like just yoga, no exercise at all. Um, different ways of eating, very like strict, clean eating, getting just really looser, more relaxed, like nothing has worked. Like this is not something that like juicing is going to solve for us. Okay. So I know that like everyone has a fantastic story of what worked for someone they know. And, um, I do understand that impulse to share the story just in case that might help me. But, um, so, so that's, that's like one issue, but the other issue is making assumptions, right? So like, you know, the supplements that I'm on, the coffee I drink, like how many women have gotten pregnant and had lots of babies while doing those things and while exercising? So like, look, if these things worked as birth control, don't you think people would be onto that? Like, wouldn't they be using it as birth control? Like, that's not how it works. So that's a little bit of the just like, like maybe we've had those thoughts. Maybe we all have those thoughts. But you don't have to say everything or comment everything on social media that comes into your mind or send it as a private message. Like you just, some things you type and you just delete and you decide not to send it. So that's in that category. Um, and then like, yeah. So, and then, you know, there was another one that asked, um, cause I had been talking about how the coaching business that I have, it's a side business for me. I do have a day job, but like the additional income has helped us to pay for, um, fertility treatment, which is not cheap. And, 
um, somebody said, you know, instead of bragging about, you know, how, how your income is allowing you to cover this cost, why don't you do something to help make it more affordable for other people, such as, you know, advocating for it to be covered by insurance, which is actually something that I have done in terms of writing letters to the members of Congress that represent me. Um, I mean, it's just another example of an assumption where people are like, well, why don't you put your money where your mouth is? Take action. And like, I mean, I've done what I know to do. Um, like, I think, again, you know, this is like, for me, it's an issue where, for example, there are laws, um, it, or there's a law, I think it's a federal law, right, um, that requires that insurance plans cover childbirth. Like, you can't sell health insurance that doesn't cover childbirth. Um, so... I think it would be great if infertility coverage was like that or, you know, one round of IVF you can put, I, I don't know, the, the details can be hashed out, but I think some coverage for that would be really amazing. It would help a lot of people. So that's my opinion. I have expressed it to some people who I think can make a difference. Um, <laughs> And if you have other ideas, like, let's have a conversation about it for how to make an impact on that issue. But don't just write to me and assume that I haven't done anything in that area. That's just another example of making assumptions um, instead of asking questions. So I think those are really the main categories. Um, and I just want to say, you know, I, I made this video because I felt like it could be helpful to people who haven't gone through this and it, you don't know what it's like until you go through it. So for people legitimately wondering, like, what can I say to make this better or that at least won't make it worse? Um, you know, just listening, asking sensitive questions, um, validating the person's experience, um, asking what you can do to help, telling the person you're there for them, like the basic kind of empathy and listening and support friend things to do really, really help. Um, and in addition to that, I just do want to say that the, um, <laughs> the, the messages and the comments I've described in this video really are the exception. And I have just been floored by, you know, not only like people from my personal life that have reached out, um, who maybe, you know, didn't feel comfortable sharing publicly that they also went through this, um, but have reached out privately, but also the people um, who I wouldn't have known except for, you know, hashtag infertility and sharing about this and the people that I never would have met otherwise. But it, it really, um, I mean, people think these online connections aren't genuine, but to me, they really are. And there are actually, you know, people that I met on social media and later met in person that I could like, you know, there, there are friends in real life and friends on social media and it starts to overlap, right? Like the friendships um, I'm making are real. And I really appreciate that. Like, I just appreciate the level of support, um, that has been offered um, in the infertility community online. And um, I mean, it's sad that we have to be part of that community, but I really do love all of you. And, um, you know, there's a lot of just like negative nonsense that happens on the internet, but it is still so worth it to me to be here for that reason. And it just really kind of, I mean, it restores my faith in humanity. It's not an overstatement to say that, that there are good people and nice people and supportive people out there. So I just want you to know that I see you and I appreciate you. And, you know, as frustrating as the experiences can be where people say the wrong thing, I think that, you know, we all are trying the best we can. And I appreciate you're watching this video. And, you know, if you... um if you share this with someone as an example of how to be supportive, just please make sure you share it sensitively and don't be like, you jerk, you need to watch this video. Um, yeah, but hopefully this is useful um, for somebody. And yeah, if it was useful or if you have anything to add, I would love if you'd share that in the comments. Thank you for watching. Um, take care.